This is my video for the 2022 WFCA State Tournament. I'm not that depressed, considering that this gigantic silver bullet with wings of an airplane is blasting me away from my whole entire life. Away from Lizzie Brody, my best friend, and away from Ray Johnson, my first real boyfriend. Not that depressed, considering I've been kidnapped from, from this monstrous steel pterodactyl and it's flying me all the way to LA to live with my father, who I never even met because he divorced my mother before I was even more born. I'd say I'm doing reasonably well, considering I've dragged 3,000 miles away from my friends in the house that I lived in ever since I was born. 3,000 miles away from my mother in my mother's grave where she lies in a cold wooden box under six feet of dirt. Depressed? Who? Me? According to childrensgriefawareness.org, 56% of respondents who lost a parent growing up would trade a year of their life to be with their departed parent. A young woman struggles with the loss of her mother and moving in with her estranged father who she hardly knows. In the narrative poem, one of those hideous books where the mother dies by Sonia Sones. My mother hated flying, especially after September 11th. She used to squeeze my hand so hard during takeoffs and landing that she'd cut off my circulation. She'd screw her eyes closed and whisper this silly little prayer someone taught her once. Something about manifold divine blessings being onto the plane of the universe or some hippy dippy thing like that. And if there was even a teensy bit of turbulence, forget it. She'd start apologizing to me for every mean thing she's ever said or done or even thought about doing. This morning when the plane was lurching down the runway and I didn't have mom's hand to hold, my heart flung itself up into my throat and for a minute there, I couldn't even breathe. I didn't know how much I depended on being depended on by her. Dad shows me a scrapbook and a little gasp escapes me. The first things I see is an old photograph of dad holding a tiny baby in his arms, grinning like a classic proud father. And the baby he's holding is me. I don't know how your Aunt Duffy managed to sneak me into the hospital to snap the picture. He's running his fingers over the image as if he wants to reach back and touch that moment. You were such a cute newborn. Dad says, smiling at the photo. This time just makes me feel like taking hold of my nice, my father's nice, warm and dry hand. We flip to the next page and there's another photo. Dad's holding me on his hip, standing in front of the monkey cage. It's like someone somehow managed to take a snapshot of my dream. We leaf through the rest of the book together, and I pretty much cannot believe what I'm seeing. There's lots more pictures of Dad holding me when I was a baby, plus copies of my school photos, even my Student of the Year award. There's a fuzzy little lock of my baby here. I wonder how Aunt Duffy swung that and D Roxes of every single one of my report cards. As Dad and I sit here next to each other, turning each of the pages, it slowly starts to sink in. All of it. And my heart can hardly hold it. Maybe you're wondering about it, but that's just tough because I'm not even going to go into how she died. Let's just say that she knew that she was sick, that she felt it burrowing, felt it gnawing at her insides, but the doctors wouldn't listen. And when they finally found it, there was nothing they could do. Nothing she could do, nothing I could do, nothing. And I guess we can say that I was holding her hand when it finally happened home 
I'm in LA for a week and I cannot believe how much I miss it already. It was nothing like this place. It was small but cozy, overflowing with all kinds of funky stuff that my mom used to find at flea markets. And every room was crammed with books. I guess it was a little bit messy. Okay, so maybe it was more than a, a little bit messy but it was way more comfortable, which made it the favorite ha hangout spot for all my friends, especially Lizzie. Lizzie used to say that she'd give her right arm to have a house like mine and her left one to have a mother like mine. And I guess I can understand why. See, mom wasn't that corny type who always had milk and cookies waiting for us when we get there after school. She was a librarian, so she didn't usually get home just till after dinner time. But she knew how to listen, and she knew how to laugh. She knew how to be there when you needed her and how to disappear when you didn't. I loved that about her. I loved a lot of things about her. Sometimes I miss her so much. That's when I hear the door open and I See, someone is heading toward me. It's my dad. He walks up to me with the softest look in his eyes. And without saying a word, he wraps his arms around me and holds me. And I don't know why, but I don't feel like pushing him away. I just rest my cheek against his chest. Then tears rush into my eyes and for the first time in centuries, they come out gushing out of me. I'm crying for myself and crying for everything that's happened. But most of all, I'm crying for mom because she's dead and never coming back. Not ever. Then I feel a sort of tremor pass through dad and I realize that he's crying too. Through his tears, he tells me that he's especially sorry. He wasn't able to figure out how to be a part of my life. And a little bit of him felt happy when she was dead because he knew he'd finally be able to be a father to me. He's way sorry about that feeling happy part. And he's sorry for all the pain he caused mom. Sorry for all the pain he caused me. Sorry that being sorry is all he has to offer. But I'm not that depressed. I'd say I'm doing reasonably well, considering that my mom died and I had to move 3,000 miles away from all my friends, my school, and the house that I lived in ever since I was born. Depressed? Who?